I think it's time for another autopsy, and this time it's at Sensky Nightlight, which is a pattern for a detector and dusk sensor on it. And it seems to have a channel, presumably for LEDs in the front, and then a sort of halo of LEDs at the back. And it's interesting to note that if you plug this in the right way up in a UK socket, the text in the front is actually upside down, which is a bit odd. Um, I'm trying to remember who sent this in. I should have made a note on it at the time. I can't remember. I tried looking on Gmail, but it must have been through one of the other communication sources, so it's uh, not. I've not found it despite searching for specific keywords. So my apologies if it was you who sent this in. Here is your light. Let's take a look at it. So it's got two positions, on and auto. And even in the on position, plugged in and with the light sensor covered over, absolutely nothing happens. I've tried it in a dark room and everything. It is dead. So I'm noticing this is triangular screws. Where is my triangular screwdriver? I think this set's got a triangular driver in it. Try that one. Yes, that fits. Excellent. So let's pop this open and see what's inside. I wonder if it's something simple. Maybe uh, the capacitor's failed and there is an inline fuse or an inrush current limiter that has inrushed. Yep. We shall soon find out. The first thing I'm seeing here is signs of heat. Signs of heat around, oh it smells quite bad as well, and it looks a bit discoloured inside. It's uh, discoloured there. We've got uh, one LED that points up the way to do the halo effect in there, well the, the little stripe. Well that comes out as well. Hmm. And we've also got a ring of LEDs around the outside which are all wired in series. Looks like it might be wired in series of this LED as well. Not sure. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight LEDs. Typically the combined, the forward voltage would be about three volts times eight, so that could have been a 24 volt thinner, uh, just to cap the voltage when the LEDs are off. Here's a passive infrared sensor. I'm guessing that's a BISS0001 chip. It's a BISS0001 chip, indeed. A standard passive infrared detector chip. This is almost certainly a voltage regulator. 78L05, that's a five volt low current voltage regulator. That is being fed from, they're using a resistor to partly drop some of the dissipation from that. Um, and I'm guessing that the zener here has been cooked. Shall we plug this in and test the voltage across it? Is this, is this safe? No, it's not. Am I going to do it? Yes, I am. Let's see if it all pops out and thrusts live circuit boards into my hand. So let's uh, measure some voltages. I think that might be... Oh, that's actually the... Uh, that is the discharge resistor there across that capacitor. Let's set this to a suitable high AC voltage. Let's set it to DC volts and measure if we're getting anything at all across the, the zener. This is where I try not to short anything dodgy out or it might go bang. Nothing across the zener. Um, not sure where the mains connections go onto this. I'll tell you what, let's unplug it at the moment. And I'm guessing that's one of the mains connections. And that'll be one of the mains connections there because that is a forming capacitive dropper. Okay, let's uh, just check mains is getting on here, which it should be. I don't see any reason it wouldn't be getting on. So let's turn this round to AC voltage. 700 volts AC and probe on there. 242 volts AC, so the supply is getting onto the board. I would expect to get something across this end of the capacitor. Nothing. It's it. Either the capacitor's gone open circuit or something's gone short circuit. The fact that the zener has been getting so hot makes me think that maybe that zener 
uh, or Zener, as some people like to say. I guess that might be the correct pronunciation, but I'm going to keep calling it a Zener because I just can't get out of that habit. Uh, I'm going to put this to continuity and see if that Zener, Zener, what everyone has failed short circuit. Ooh, that has failed completely short circuit. Oh, that's a... Uh, that's a bit disappointing, so yeah, I shall doodle right now. I shall doodle down what I'm seeing here. Where's my notepad? Notepad. Pen. What I'm seeing here is a supply come in, and it is forming, let's uh, focus down onto there. The supplies come in, and it's uh, forming a standard capacitive dropper. It's got the capacitor with a discharge resistor across it. So this is the big capacitor, the dropper capacitor here. The discharge resistor, has that been getting warm as well? Or is it just a, oh, what is that value? That is kind of, that resistor itself may have been getting a bit warm because the color bands are all a bit weird on it. I can't read the color bands in that. But anyway, there is a discharge resistor across that. That then goes to one side of the bridge rectifier so it's going to the bridge rectifier. I'll just draw it as the lazy bridge rectifier as I usually do. The other connection is going straight to the bridge rectifier from the mains. So that's the mains in, AC in. Uh, the output from the bridge rectifier appears to be going to a capacitor, what might be a little discharge, a surface mount resistor across that, and the zener. So let's just draw the zener here. And this is a common thing that ultimately, when the LEDs are off, that zener is just shunting the supply down to keep the voltage from floating up too high. That's probably to protect the sim, uh, the five volt regulator, the LM7805. Uh, so we get the capacitor across here. I can actually see the capacitor tucked under the circuit board here, and it's just bridged across there. So it's going to have been baked by that uh, hot zener. I should get the solder iron on here. Let's. Uh See if I can get this, salvage this light in some way. Um, I'm guessing this little transistor down here might be turning the LEDs on. So theoretically, if I was to bridge that transistor, um, I could then just bring the LEDs on continually so it could at least be used a nightlight without the zener because then the LEDs would uh, act as the current limiter, as the voltage limiter. But that's kind of a moot point because uh, then the passive infrared detector isn't going to work at all. There's a wee light centre, by the way. Nice, it's got a flat top. Uh, so this is then going out. So this is going to be plus whatever voltage that Zener or Zener is. Say 24 volts, it's probably going to be above that. Zero volts, although it's not actually zero volts, it is referenced to the mains. Then there's the 78505. Regulator, which is taking that in and uh, it's actually got a resistor in series with it this resistor here um, And then it will be going down to the zero volt rail and that will be supplying the PIR circuitry P I R uh, And I would guess that there might be a resistor in series this or it might just be relying on this capacitor here but there'll be a resistor possibly in series of these LEDs that will, uh, when this transistor switches on, it will bring those LEDs on. And at that point, the zener would have stopped dissipating heat, although it's not going to do anything. It's not dissipating any heat at the moment because it has gone dead short, short circuit by the look of it. Right, I'm going to try and remove that zener now and uh, we'll just check it is absolutely short circuit. Pretty sure it is. Uh, this is where I may have to use high speed alternating between either side of this because it's a surface mount component uh, just to try and desolder it. So I shall melt some fresh solder on that side and on that side to wet it and then uh, alternate from side to side until it kind of oh, it's out. Okay. Right here. Let's double check that little tiny zener. I'm guessing that the zener or zener was named after someone. 
Dr. Zuna. That is absolutely short circuit. That should have either displayed uh, a very high value because the meter would not exceed its forward voltage or roughly about 0.6 volts like a normal diode. So that Zener diode has screwed up. I'll just alternate. I'll say Zener half the time and uh, Zener the other half and that should please everybody. Uh, so right now, uh, I don't know what I've got in the way of Zeners. Hold on, I'm just going to check. Okay, well, I did not have any Zeners or Zeners anywhere near that range. But I've done a bit for the more reverse engineering. This LED is just a sort of like an indicator LED, and it's got a resistor in series with it. What is the volume of that resistor? It's 392, so that's 3.9K, 39 uh, and two zeros, 3,900 ohms. And there is a resistor in series, the string of eight LEDs around the outside. The value of that resistor is 301. So three zero and one zero, so 300 ohms. And they're switched by a transistor with the signal from the passive infrared detector module down here. And I reckon that I can at least recover this as a basic, without that, without replacing that Zener, which would get very, very hot again. Um, I wonder if this is, is a common failure mode in these lights. Uh, but I can put a link across. Another thing could be done here, or oh, maybe not. Uh, actually, it should be able to do that. To be able to do that, the value of that capacitor could have been made lower, and that would have taken a lot of the strain off the Zener diode. So uh, I'm going to bypass the transistor by going straight to the LEDs here, uh, and up to this leg of the output, the power supply. So let's uh, solder one end of a small wire link on here and the other end of the wire link onto here. And theoretically, when I plug this in, it's either going to go bang or it's going to work. I know you guys want it to go bang. That's fine if you want it to go bang, but uh, well, this is where I overcompetently say I'm sure it will work. But let's keep my fingers well clear of it anyway when I plug it in. Diddy, it's now lit up. So uh, that has now been converted into an ordinary... Oh, look at the colour. That is weird. They've got a completely different colour of LEDs on the other side. Or is that... Is that just smoky discoloration? It might actually be. No, the LEDs look a, a different shade of white on the other side. So um, that is kind of it fixed. To fix it properly, I'd need to add the Zener. Uh, I would also, I'm just going to turn the light on, so beware, there's going to be, actually, I'll just shield you from that by just pausing momentarily. And we're back without any blinding glare. Let's take this uh, circuit board out and take a look at the value of that capacitor and see what could be done to actually make this uh, somewhat less aggressive to the um, to the Zener. I'm not sure I could actually measure the capacitor in circuit. I could have tested the capacitor in circuit, or I can just take a look at it, but it might actually be obscured anyway. Oh, it's got a fuse in line. The capacitor's value may be obscured. I wonder if that uh, resistor still, the discharge resistor still works. It does look a wee bit uh, toasty. Let's measure the DC voltage across it and see uh, if it is discharging. Usually, uh, when you put the meter across, the meter will have a discharging effect, but you can often see a sudden deflection of the voltage uh, briefly. So let's uh, get on to there. No, nothing. It's completely discharged. I'll just check that. I've put my fingers across it. Yes, it's discharged. One day I'll do that while it's still plugged in. The capacitor's value is obscured. 400 volt capacitor. It's a 680 nanofarad capacitor. I wonder if you could uh, still run the passive infrared detector um, by reducing the current somewhat. I think you probably could. I don't think the PIR circuit is going to draw that much, so theoretically you might be able to reduce that to a 330 nanofarad capacitor instead. And uh, that would just cut the intensity of the light down and it would take about half the dissipation off the cremated Zener. 
Uh, there we go. It's kind of fixed, but it's not a fix. Uh, but it, uh, it at least pinpointed the problem and proved that it was faulty by bypassing the control circuitry to bring it on. And of course, taking this out and testing and finding it was dead short circuit. Many semiconductor components do feel dead short. If you uh, have a dimmer switch in your house and one day you turn it on and the lamp it's controlling goes pop and you replace the lamp and uh, reset the circuit breaker if, it, if it's tripped the breaker, you may find that the dimmer is just not responding anymore. It's just at full intensity. And the same with uh, disco lights. Some of the older disco light systems used to just, a channel used to jam on it. And if you go to the fairground, you'll often see the control systems for the uh, fairground lighting, a section is jammed on. That's usually down to a failed uh, component, uh, like a, uh, in that, those cases, it's a triac. But the same thing happens in amplifiers and Switchboard power supplies, diodes fail short circuit and transistors fail short circuit. Short circuit is a very common failure mode for electronics, as in this case. Quite interesting. Quite enjoyed that.